Travis Hassel, thanks for joining us here. This is a Southern Miss team that's never won at Western Kentucky. They are shorthanded, just like Western Kentucky. We know the story about Charles Bassey, preseason player of the year in conference. They lost him. They really only go six deep. Tavion Hollings were stepping up as the leader of this team. Well, you know, anytime you lose an All-American, you're going to suffer a little bit. But when you have a first-team All-Conference player in uniform as well, he can pick up the slack. And that's what Tavion Hollingsworth has done. A three-year starter, his first two seasons, nearly 1,000 points in those years, picking up right where he left off. And the reason is because he is a dynamic player with the basketball in his hands going off the dribble, the creativity off the charts, a big time player in transition as well. They'll need him to be really good tonight to get out of here. He's making his 96th consecutive start tonight. That's top 11 in the entire country. On the Southern Miss side, they also only go about six or seven deep. They rely on a trio of starters who score in double figures. And no All-Americans amongst them, by the way. But some pretty solid Conference USA players. Ladavius Drain, a really good three-point shooter. Tyler Stevenson outweighed in the post, but he can score in there. And Gabe Watson off the dribble. All three of those guys will need to be productive. But I believe they're going to need a little help from some other guys if they're going to get out of here and pull the upset tonight. From the big three to the man with three names who stepped up big the last three games. Leonard Harper Baker over his last three, averaging 12 points, 13 rebounds, and seven assists a game. Well, he certainly is the candidate for the, the fourth scorer with this group. More than capable, as you mentioned, and talking about him playing well of late. To me, they all have to be a 9 or a 10 tonight. All five starters, again, they don't go into the bench very deep. So those five guys will need to play very well for 40 minutes. Okay, we hope to treat you well tonight from the sideline. We want to treat the birthday girl well <laughs> as well. Kristen Balboni, happy birthday, young lady. Chris, I told you not to mention that on camera. I thought that was staying between the three of us. Uh, this isn't Vegas. Yeah, but thank you. That's true, that's true. It is not, uh, but thank you very much. That means a lot. I'm so excited to be spending my birthday here with you guys and with everyone who is tuning in with us on Facebook. We love hearing from all of you. So go ahead and get those comments coming. We love to find out at the start of the game who you are and where you are watching from so go ahead and let us know we got polls for you coming throughout the game we're going to be asking for your input and remember that you can always post on instagram i know these are two very engaged fan bases so we want to see you as well as hear you in the comments you just go to instagram you use the hashtag usmvs WKU, and we will post your picture right here. Can't wait to see those. And Chris, I hope that is the last time we mention my birthday during this game. Well, Chris, I think they're going to be turning out the lights soon to sing you happy birthday. The <laughs> candles will be out. All right, here are the starting lineups for tonight's game. And these, get used to the names, because this is about all we're going to see from each one of these teams tonight, Tim. There's no doubt. They don't, neither team is going to go very deep into their bench speaking to both coaches before the game obviously foul trouble and injuries are two things you're concerned about when you're not going into your lineup both teams have their fingers crossed but both teams have been used to playing with these lineups so they should be about where they think they need to be the good news for western kentucky is that cam justice is back is doing much better. He did not play a week ago in the loss to FIU. He is their sixth man off the bench, and he scored 11 points in the big win on Thursday at home here in a blackout against Louisiana Tech. And there's Rick Stansberry, head coach of Western Kentucky in his fourth season. 18th overall, spent many years as the head coach at Mississippi State. He's done a good job this season with very limited resources. On the other sideline, the first-year head coach for Southern Miss, but no stranger to the Golden Eagles. Jay Lander, the graduate back in 1988 of Southern Miss, led the team to a, an NIT championship in 1987. He's stoked to be back, Tim. Anytime you get to coach at your alma mater, it's special. I played at Liberty, and I also got to coach at Liberty as an assistant coach. So when you walk back through those doors, especially as the head coach, I can only imagine the, the pride that he feels getting back in. Now it's time to go to work and get this program back to where it needs to be. Our players to watch for tonight's contest. I mentioned Cameron Justice. 
10 plus in two of his last three games. One of the few players uh, in the starting lineup for Southern Miss that we haven't talked about, Boban Jokdomi, a redshirt senior out of London. Uh, he's averaging eight points a game, shoots it well from the floor, just under 55%. Yeah, he's a wild card for them. He, they need him to rebound the basketball, which he doesn't do as well as a big guy just for a game. But they'll need points from him as well. Offensive productivity is something that they're going to have to have production out of all five starters tonight to keep up, to keep pace with Western because they are dynamic and quite dynamite in transition in this building. It gets electric. They get that crowd going. We watched them destroy La Tech on Thursday night, one of the top teams in this league, primarily because of the energy in the building. And a near sellout crowd once again for this one. Southern Miss trying to win for the first time ever in this building. They are 0-6. The series history has been all Western Kentucky. They lead it 11-1, and they've won eight straight matchups. Jordan Rawls, number three, freshman. Dynamite game the other night, 19 points. 8 for 12 from the field. He was really good off the dribble versus La Tech, and they nearly turned it over there. And batted out of bounds by Tyler Stevenson with 9 on the shot clock. Jordan Rawls, there you see the freshman into the starting lineup. Didn't start in the beginning of the year, obviously, with the injuries. Pressed into duty, but he was a guy that they recruited to play really behind Kenny Cooper. And you talked to Coach Stansberry about Kenny Cooper, the transfer from Lipscomb, who was supposed to be their starter. Lipscomb didn't clear him, and now he's redshirting as a result. But he would have been a great welcome piece, a missing piece to what they have. But they're still a very good basketball team. There's Rawls with the jump stop. He looks to continue his great play over the last couple of games. Had a career-high 19. A couple games ago at FIU, he had 12 points, 7 assists. There's a little floater on the other end from Ladavius Drain. And quickly the other way, Josh Anderson. The transition defense, so important. And when you allow Western to score, they can set up this 1-2-2, two, two, which is kind of a token diamond trap. But they've been getting turnovers off of this and really scoring points with it. It's not something that it's designed to do. Drain off to a fast start. Five points. Made his first two buckets. The other night, it was Stewart, number 14, on the road at Marshall. Was red hot. Hit four of his first five shots. Tonight, Ladavius Drain taking his turn. Now Carson Williams. Backing his defender down load. patiently. Oh. He is a load. Now he, he'll never be Charles Bass. He doesn't pretend to be, doesn't play him on TV. Plays more like Charles Barkley, really. Yeah, I mean, it, it, that's a great analogy. A six foot five playing the post. He uses his body so well to get to the rim, and you saw that on display. Drano, red hot <laughs> Ladavius Drain, three for three. His last game, he was three for 13 in the loss to Marshall. He's, he hit 52 threes coming into tonight, by far the most on this team. Off to a terrific start, the kind of start they're going to need and did some. Now Williams almost came down and touched his toes to the deck. It would have been an up and down, but he got it to go. Quick start for both these teams offensively, 8-8. Eight, eight. This is designed to slow you down. Great pass. Drain again, oh. he has 10 points in the first two and a half minutes. Somebody find number 11 if you're wearing a white jersey. My goodness. Williams again taking it strong. At shoot around today, Jay Ladner told his players, on Williams in particular, you have to stay down. In fact, when he throws a shot fake, I want you to get lower. But it's easier said than done because a shot fake, pretty solid shooter, you go for it most of the time. Josh Anderson comes up with a steal. Southern Miss finally stopped, even though they haven't missed yet. Four for four from the floor. That one off the mark. It looks like it's out off the Golden Eagles. That one went off the hand of Artur Kanukchuk. Watch the prior play. Just a face you, look you dead in the eye, and stroke it from downtown. Ladavius Drain clearly on fire here early. It did arena. Williams, 
Williams again using that head fake and again had an easy look but wow. missed it and the rebound to Leonard Harper Baker and Ladavius Drain is basically scoring point for point and now finally Stewart and Stevenson as I say in the mix now he's been getting thrown all around defensively by Carson Williams but Southern Miss has a two-point lead in the early going first points by a non drain <laughs> Stevenson had to guard Iron Bennett the other night, which is no picnic for a guy his size. Jared Savage knocks down a triple, and Western Kentucky has the lead. And Tyler Stevenson, just 207 pounds, six foot eight. And Iron Bennett, well over, they, they list him at 299, I believe, but I think he's crossed that 300 threshold. These teams are red hot, combined to shoot 11 for 13 so far. Will it stay that way? Yes, it will. Southern Miss still hasn't missed. Artur Kanutchuk with the three. This is the type of start Southern Miss needed offensively, but they haven't exactly lit it up with the defensive end either, as Western has really gotten every shot they want. And now Southern Miss has gone to a 2-3 zone to limit some of that penetration. Rawls got it blocked by Stevenson. Hollingsworth corrals four on the shot clock, oh. in and out, no good. Tavion Hollingsworth almost with a look what I found, two points, but it didn't go. Southern missed six for six to start this game, and that's the first miss. That was really good defense by Carson Williams, though, to contest that shot. Deep three from Savage. That'll bring us to our first media timeout of the ball game. Quick start for both of these teams, and as a heavy underdog, a really good start for Jay Landers' Southern Miss squad. A two-point lead on Western Kentucky with 14.52 to go here in the first half. On Facebook, no commercials, more Kristen Balboni. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I've been checking out the comments. Love to see all of you chiming in. I mean, when you can, between baskets, right? We're right. off to such a hot start. Uh, but we want to know from you, we've got our first poll of the game. You're going to see it pop up on the bottom of your screen. We just want to know which team you're rooting for. And, of course, we always accept write-in votes if you're uh -huh. just, you know, watching. Uh, maybe you've got a vested interest, let's say, sure. or you're scouting the competition. We see some other CUSA fans from other teams jumping in. But uh, if you are a fan of one of these teams, let us know. I always like to see the breakdown. Well, as we, as you said, Chris, uh, almost a sold-out crowd here. So we right. know a lot of Western fans are here. So we're going to have that poll uh, before we resume play. We're going to have the results of it. But in the meantime, I want to show you guys something that I certainly noticed in uh, pregame warm-ups. And I, I think you guys did as well. Did you see Is the pants? Southern oh, yeah. Miss's warm-up pants? <laughs> You notice that? I, I couldn't take my eyes off of them. Yeah. And now this is my first time covering Southern Miss this season. And I, I immediately came over to you guys. I said, have you guys seen these pants before? So I went and talked to David, the SID, and he said, now this is a, a Coach Ladner special. He loves the 80s. They're actually breakaway pants on the side, which is very cool. You know, the ones that snap. Oh, yeah. And, Tim, you know what I'm talking I about. Do. You're an athlete. I, I used uh, to wear those snaps. Those were my favorite. I absolutely love them. So now they're That's wearing great. them before every game. And as I'm sure the Southern Miss fans know that already. But like I said, it was my first time seeing them because they weren't wearing them last year when I covered them. Right. And, we, uh, we saw them a few times last year. But remember last year, they, they were rolling toward the end of the season. Yep. Yeah, I mean, they, they, they went into the conference tournament yeah, we had as one of the teams to beat. And uh, yeah, I think it was their best season since making the NCAA tournament earlier in the decade. But the, the, the rebuild is going to be a little bit slower than I think Southern Miss fans would have liked. Jay Lander wasn't hired until after signing day. So it's it's not going to happen this season, might not happen next season. Well, you think about what Doc Sadler did with this group. He inherited a team that was under sanctions, yeah. both scholarship wise and other recruiting sanctions but somehow each year they were able to win more games for the fifth straight year and then doc sadler finally took another job but you know jay latner is very happy that he got to inherit this team in whatever condition is in because he believes he can recruit enough players to get this program back to where it was you think about southern miss is the last at large team in conference usa 2012 so it's been a while since Conference USA has had an at-large bid team, and Southern Miss was that team mm. almost a decade ago. And the results are in. Uh, Western has 81% of the fans that voted, and 
Southern Miss 19, but I tell you what, I know those Southern Miss fans. That's a strong 19% <laughs> vocal. And happy so far, I would think, with a two-point lead, even though Western Kentucky comes up with a stop. Five minutes into this game, two-point advantage for the Golden Eagles, who made their first six shots from the floor. And now the shot clock dwindling down to 10. Tavion Hollingsworth directing traffic. Anderson with five on the shot clock. Got Harper Baker in the air and then gets fouled. Looked like he was going up for the shot as well, so it should be two free throws coming. But again, if you're guarding Western, they're not the best three-point shooting team. So you really should kind of stay down on those shot fakes. They want to drive the ball to the rim, and they have guys who are very good at it. Really, all five guys on the floor can get to the rim and finish. So they can shoot it, so you have to respect it. But kind of let them make a couple before you just go for the first pump fake. It's really a defensive deficiency right now for Southern Miss. I believe I said Lander. I want to correct myself. Ladner, the head coach of Southern Miss, the ball player, graduated 1988. Five years as the head coach at Southeastern Louisiana, won a Southland Conference title a couple of years ago. Sort of a 1 2 2, or really a 2 1 2 right now being deployed by Western Kentucky, playing that zone. They'll mix it up. Another three. This one from Gabe Watson. Southern Miss is four for four from three-point range. They only average five threes yeah. a game. <laughs> they only make five threes a game. But this is why we play the game, ladies and gentlemen. You never know from night to night. Right now, they are on fire from downtown. Rawls going baseline, bounce to Williams. Whoa, hung in the air. I believe that shot was an afterthought. He wanted to dish that off. There was no one to dish it to, but the presence of mind to put it in the bucket. Williams off to a solid start for Western. Six points, three for four from the floor, all of them in close. And now the man to man. You've got to help on those screens. Drain. Those, those still red. Those hot. pin down screens, especially with Drain coming off of it, you better be there. Fight through that screen or get a little help from your big. Drain is five for five with 12 points. And right here, Carson Williams, you can see him hang and looking to his left, but had enough hang time to get his vision back on that rim and able to shoot the floater into the bucket. Cameron Justice into the game for the first time for Western Kentucky with that bulging disc issue in his back. 11 points last time out. But he's feeling better this week as Southern Miss finally misses a three. Now four for five from beyond the arc. I think it was David Letterman who said, we all know how painful that can be. <laughs> <laughs> the old bulging disc. <laughs> Drain wide open. And he finally missed. Yeah, uh, maybe that is the defense to be deployed on him. Let him shoot it. Justice will shoot it off the mark. And Southern Miss comes out of there with it, despite Boban Jakdomi hitting the deck. Jared Savage had a chance to retain that, but he tried to tip it to Cameron Justice. But if you're a Western fan, you got to be holding your breath every time Cameron Justice comes in with that bad back. You know. He's just a, a collision away from being out again. And this Western team just can't afford another injury. And they need that body because he's a three-point threat. Even if he's not making him. Just being out there, you have to honor him, and that spreads the floor for what they really want to do. They want to drive the basketball. And even missing games, Justice has made 36 threes on the year. Southern Miss, a double-digit underdog, up by three, nearing the halfway point of this first half. That one will stay with Southern Miss. Oh, I think they missed that one. Yeah, I, I kind of thought the same thing, but Jack. stay with Southern Miss with seven on the shot clock and a three-point lead with 11-14 to play in this first half. 
Well, Western Kentucky fans certainly recognize the gentleman who is on the bench for Southern Miss, and that is Hilltopper great Anthony Winchester. He is the video coordinator for Southern Miss uh, this year. It's his first year with Southern Miss. The last time, actually, he was here at Western Kentucky, he was getting inducted into their Hall of Fame. That was in October 2019 that he was inducted. He ranks ninth on Western Kentucky's all-time scoring list. So, as I said, first season with Coach Ladner here at Southern Miss. Before that, he was at Loyola Marymount. And he also played professionally in Spain and Puerto Rico after leaving Western Kentucky and then spent some time on staff here um, at Western Kentucky a couple of years in between playing overseas because he was injured. I, I got a chance to talk to him earlier today. I mean, for a little bit, I, I was talking to him and asking what it felt like to be back. And there were yeah. so many people coming up to him <laughs> while we were talking. You can tell that he is well loved here. I heard some people saying that they might have some Winchester jerseys uh, out tonight nice. uh, in his return. But yeah, first time back since getting inducted into the Hall of Fame. Uh, in October of 2019. You got to imagine he feels a little conflicted tonight, right? He said, this is home. It, it's home, you know. I've never had to walk into my old school with the enemy, but it's got to be conflicting, like you said. You, on the one hand, you definitely want to win. On the other hand, you want your school to do well, too. So, mixed feelings. I like that you called it the enemy. Oh, Not just yeah. the opponent, the enemy yeah. tonight. <laughs> But I've never seen, um, I was I was telling him earlier, I said, I've never seen two fan bases They're so excited about one person. Right. You never uh, see exactly. that. And I mean, you can definitely tell that they are both very, very proud of their association with Anthony Winchester, as I'm sure uh, fans who are watching right now on Facebook, I'm sure they have lots of nice comments about the, uh, about him. I'll be checking those out as well. So great to get a chance to talk to the Hilltopper great and now the Southern Miss video coordinator yeah, earlier. Former Sunbelt Player of yeah. the Year, yeah. AP, honorable mention, All-American. Incredible career for Western Kentucky. All right, Southern Miss has it underneath their own basket with seven on the shot clock. Yeah, that was a miss by the officials. Jack Donnie definitely hit that ball out before, but they give Southern Miss a second chance opportunity. Couldn't cash it in, though. They got another chance there, but uh, oh. they're going to get another one here. <laughs> that one had to be hoisted up by Kanutchuk with the shot clock winding down. And now they get a, a fresh 20, only resets to 20. Yep. And a three-point lead, shooting 61.5% so far. They made their first six shots. Now eight for 13 from the floor. Ladavius Drain has 12 points. Leonard Harper Baker. You don't see many mid-range shots anymore, but that'll do. You don't see a lot of posting up either. That was a back to the basket. Then he faced up. Nice pull up jump shot in traffic. Now a 2 3 being deployed by Southern Miss once again. Cam Justice misfiring once again on a three. He's 0 for 2 off the bench. Good transition defense. Everyone matriculates back. They stop the ball, they cover the basket, and they close out the shooters. Wild miss from Gabe Watson. And again, Southern Miss is going to get another opportunity. Western Kentucky won for its last nine from the floor. It, it seems oddly quiet in here, does it not? It really does, considering the amount of people. And when you think about how loud it was on Thursday night, they had a blackout. Louisiana Tech was in at the time, one of the top teams in Conference USA in terms of record. A big matchup, and they ended up winning going away, but primarily to me because of the electricity in the building. But we're not feeling that right now. But you have to give Southern Miss credit because they're making everything they throw up. Kanutchuk makes it a seven point lead, largest of the game. 10 for 16 from the floor. Justice thought about another three point attempt. They're really packing it in on defense. Justice will take a step in and knock down the two. And they definitely are honoring Justice. When he caught it the first time, two defenders closed out really to discourage that three. But the second time, shot fake, pull up jumper, splash. Savage skies high for the weak side rebound. Quickly up to Anderson, who gets bumped. Boy, they get. Down the floor, <laughs> lightning fast. Don't I, was, they? I was just about to observe that myself. I mean, from the moment Savage got that rebound, 
they all can push all five players with Savage one hard dribble quick pass up the sideline but again that's a little bit of a defensive breakdown on, on Southern Miss to not get matched up quick enough Stadium is the only 24 7 network available on both television and digital devices without a cable subscription catch live and on-demand games extensive highlights classic games and original programming just check your local listings or go to watchstadium.com stadium welcome to the game second free throw good and the seven point lead is down to three with 920 to go here in the first half you always want to play on top on the road check that box for Southern Miss so far but they have to find a way to continue this offensive productivity. They only average about 66 points a game. Can they keep this up is the question. Now that was a bad mistake. Shot clock doesn't reset. Oh, boy. Tyler Stevenson had a point-blank bucket, but I don't think he got a good handle on the basketball. Oh, Anderson, great job diving and tipping, and that one no good from Jeremiah Gambrell. Quickly, it's Watson. And he gets fouled from behind. Fans not pleased so far. <laughs> Teams losing, calls not really going their way. Heard them that time. We hadn't heard a lot from the fans, but they didn't like this call. You, you be the judge. Pretty solid defense by Tavion Hollingsworth. To me, besides the fact that he may have traveled with an extra Euro, Tavion seemed to get all leather on that play. Yeah, I thought he got fouled from behind by Anderson, but you're right, they got Hollingsworth for that... Uh, swipe at the ball and one more free throw coming for Watson as we see Bill Muse for the first time we don't see him often at all <laughs> number 22 I, I honestly when I walked into practice today I thought I wasn't sure who was a player and who wasn't <laughs> And I honestly thought he was not a player <laughs> because they had a bunch of coaches out there and managers because they don't have a lot of bodies to practice. Well, he was late closing out on Justice, but he missed a wide open shot. He was just trying to buy him some minutes here. As we mentioned off the top, both of these teams extremely thin. And Southern Miss hasn't had a bench point in its last two games. I wonder what the over under is on that. We, we should have did that as a poll question, Balboni. Should have done that. <laughs> Will there be a bench player to score in this game? Now, Cameron Justice did score for Western Kentucky. As Stevenson gets his way to the free throw line with 8.04 to play here in the first oh. half. I was going to say the over under has to be what, two? <laughs> yeah, I put the over under at one and a half. One and a half, yeah. For uh, Southern Miss bench points. And Stevenson right there going to work giving. Williams a dose of his own medicine backing him in and shooting over Stevenson walked on last season and he's been a great success story just a sophomore averaging 12 points six and a half rebounds a game he's top 10 in the conference in rebounds and field goal percentage and of all the barrage of three-point shooting you won't see one from him he has not taken a three-pointer in his career so far Tavion Hollingsworth beats the press easily and now sets up the offense. Oh, a little Euro step, and it ends up being a wide open bucket. And, and that's what makes Tavion so difficult to guard because he's just got so many moves. You're really not sure what he's going to do when he's coming at you downhill. Very tough. Nice pass and a rejection from behind. Muse is going to launch. Air ball. Drain got it back. The offensive rebounding has been solid here in the first half of Southern Miss, and they capitalize. Drain again. A remarkable shooting performance by Ladavius Drain. The official stats have him at 13 points. Thought he had an extra bucket in there. Double check that. They're going to get a foul on Stevenson for reaching in to try to deny that entry pass. Southern Miss has equaled its largest lead of the game. Up by seven on Western Kentucky with 7.01 to play. You're in a very important game 
for both of these teams with bonus play right around the corner, Kristen. Yeah, Chris, it, it's funny. Uh, the three of us were sitting in the in the little green room, the break room, eating whatever, our the personal media room. pizzas. We were eating our pizzas, and we were sitting there doing some math. We each had our we each had our papers out and, and looking at bonus play and the effects of this. And Chris, as you mentioned, we came to it. And I think it was you. you. You seem like a math guy. You came to the conclusion you that this is. He's a nerd. Is, is he yeah. a nerd? <laughs> <laughs> and look, I'm not saying anything. You came to the conclusion that how important this game is for both teams. Southern Miss needs to win this one in order to help solidify them um, outside of that bottom two that right. get left out of the Conference USA tournament. And if Western Kentucky wins this one, then they have solidified a spot in that top pod of conference play. So I thought we could show the standings. And, uh, and, and just as of right now, Tim, can you show us who would be in that top pod? And I just want to point out, Rice and Middle Tennessee were in the final seconds of their game. Rice is currently up, up by six in the final seconds. So those standings will change there at the bottom. Uh, so I'm doing this freehand, but that is not right. Tim doesn't want FIU <laughs> to be in the conference anymore. <laughs> now, there we go. There so there's is. the line, and it looks like there is some nice separation between FIU, Charlotte, and FAU. That's going to be the line right now, anyway, where Group 1 will be. The five teams would be in Group 1, and if Western Kentucky wins tonight, they guarantee themselves a spot in Group 1. Down there where Southern Miss is, that's no man's land. That's yeah, where you don't, you don't go to the conference. You don't tournament. want to be Southern Miss or Middle Tennessee because you know you don't get to book your trip to Frisco, Texas. And you know, if, if some conferences let all the teams go, and every once in a while you'll see a team bubble up and get all the way to the finals, but that can't happen in the Conference USA because they don't allow it. Well, if Ladavius Drain keeps playing the way he's playing, Southern Miss might end up getting to Frisco. 13 points and three three-pointers to start this game. The kind of start that they definitely needed to have and this is one of those games, again, this is the last game before, the last home game before they go on the road for two. This is one that if you're Western, you really don't want to let slip. North Texas earlier today was able to get a win in a tough fart game at UAB. So you want to kind of keep pace with them. But Western has beaten both North Texas and La Tech here Mm -hmm. in 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 Bowling Green so they'll have the tiebreaker with both those teams in terms of the head-to-head -head. but you don't want to lose one to a lower tier team that kind of puts you behind the eight ball in terms of getting that top spot yeah if they lose this one you can pretty much kiss goodbye any chance of uh, it be being the number one seed yeah in it, the top group if they win tonight as we were talking earlier they pretty much clinched one of the top five spots Guarantee themselves a spot in group one with a win tonight. Williams, a weak side rebound. A good defense there. Either good defense or a bad no call, depending on who you're rooting for in this game. And Gabe Watson comes right down. Southern Miss is up by nine. If you're watching this without knowing the records, you would think at times Southern Miss looks like the better team. Now, I don't think they are but they are playing so well here in the early part of this game. So what's going on, Tim? I mean, is it is, is Western Kentucky sleepwalking? Was it a good game plan from Southern Miss, all of the above? I think when the ball goes in, things just look better. You're doing the same things, but sometimes your players get hot. We asked Jay Ladner about that before the game earlier today. You know, they scored 84 points at UAB, and I, I asked them, how, how'd you do that? Because UAB, arguably a top... 20 team in the country in terms of points given up and yet they got 84 on the road but he said everything we shot went in he said drain hit a bank shot three from the corner on an impossible angle he said that's when i knew we were going to win the game now hollinsworth can't get that to go and it's kind of been that way here in the first half in bowling green these guys seemingly can't miss right now leonard harper baker that hit the backboard first. But getting, getting back in transition is clearly a priority. There are guys in black shirts that are running back on defense before they even shoot the ball. They want to make sure they keep this team out of transition. And, and despite that effort, Hollingsworth able to get one in transition on that pull-up shot. 
Southern Miss just 1 and 12 away from home this season. That UAB game, the only one that they've won outside of Hattiesburg. But they've led pretty much the whole way to start this game as double digit dogs. That one had to be fired up last second by Harper Baker, who's been off the mark tonight. Savage. Oh, he gets it blocked at the rim by Harper Baker, but they call a foul. Savage, appropriately named right there. He wanted to hammer that thing. Great job getting a step to the rim, but Leonard Harper Baker building a wall at the rim. Pretty good block in my opinion, too. But nonetheless, Savage will go to the line for a couple of free ones. Yeah, I thought in real time it was all ball. So hard, it's as hard as an official. And that's why coaches are telling you all the time to take it to the hoop strong. Because when you do, it just looks like you got fouled sometimes, even when, you know, the, the resistance was clean. Harper Baker takes a seat with a couple of fouls. And Savage misses the second free throw. Southern Miss is led by as many as nine as we take under four minutes here in the first half. Watson got that one poked out of bounds by Rawls. Seven on the shot clock, and this is the, the second time already in the first half that Southern Miss goes into a media timeout with seven on the shot clock, interestingly enough. Yeah. 32-28, Southern Miss on top of Western Kentucky as we take a look at the upcoming schedule for the Hilltoppers. We, the three of us, Kristen Balboni, Tim Scarborough, Chris Hassel, going to be at UTEP this week. And then they make the trip to UTSA as well. So to El Paso, San Antonio, and then bonus play begins, and we still don't know. That's the... Uh, beauty if you will huh. of bonus play everything is up in the air after that there is not a scheduled game after utsa next weekend and again you play the teams in your group so the top five teams will all play each other once and the, the middle five will play each other once and then the bottom four will all get to play each other so it's a lot at stake in terms of the last next couple of games trying to get locked into one of those top tiers because Chris, if you're if you're in the top group, no matter what your record is, you can lose all four of those games, and you're still going to be one of the top five teams. You cannot get knocked out of your group once you get locked in. And for Southern Miss, they've got the Florida swing coming to their joint. FAU and FIU, those teams have been really good at home. Yeah. But I think you you should feel if you're a Southern Miss fan, especially the way you're playing tonight, you got those two games at home. I don't see why you can't at least split before going into bonus play. They'll probably be in that last group. And again, the bottom two teams in that last group will not make the Conference USA tournament, which takes place right there. Ford Center at the Star in Frisco. They'll take the Cowboy Field out. Yeah. They'll put the dueling basketball courts in. We have two games going on at once at all times. This will be the third year for it. Yeah, men's and women's in Frisco, Texas. This team will be there for sure. The question is, will the team in black, they have a chance. A win tonight could go a long way. And they're well on their way. They played a very good game here in the first half. Of course, it's a 40-minute game. They, they battled with Marshall in the early part of the game, too, before succumbing to Marshall on Thursday. Well, they had a seven-point lead with 11 minutes to go and then got blown out the rest of the way. Allensworth missed that. He thought he got fouled. That one poked out of bounds at Southern Miss basketball. And running out of gas is something that happens when you have players logging the amount of minutes that the starting five are logging for Southern Miss. And right there, pretty solid defense that time. Hollingsworth feels like he should have been getting two free ones. But they play on. He missed the layup. Western Kentucky trying to push the pace each time they have the ball. Southern Miss is taking a lot off the shot clock most possessions. 
That's an easy look inside and another bucket. This one from Jock Domi. Well, they were running a point zone, and when you're doing that, communication is very important. And Williams got caught between going out on the wing and staying home, and he gave up a backdoor cut for a layup. Working against this zone, Rawls steps into a three. Again, off the mark. Western Kentucky, one for 11 from three-point range. And may have gotten away with a walk. Now, there's just no juice in this arena whatsoever. None. It's quite surprising. Southern Miss has taken this crowd out of it with their stellar play at this end of the court. They have been really good. Watson from the elbow, fading wow. away, nothing wow. but net. Everything seems to be falling at that end for Southern Miss. Lead back up to eight. Western did have a brief lead early, but only by two as Cameron Justice knocks down his first bucket from behind the arc. Has five points to equal his jersey number so far. A little pep in his step, too, jogging back. Mentioned that bulging disc, but he looks like he's feeling pretty good this evening. He missed his first three three-point attempts, and all of them have been open. Maybe if you see one go down, yep. the rest will follow. Again, shot clock down to six. Drain breaks that. Great contest, though. Josh Anderson made him miss that one off of that UCLA cut. Hollingsworth. Anderson. Came up, hung on the rim. You got numbers here. They capitalized. Anderson and Hollingsworth are taking themselves out of the play. But a great job by the other three guys to occupy them just enough to get everyone back in play. And they'll take the shot clock under 10. One minute to go here in this first half. Watson. Four on the clock. Got to throw it up. <laughs> he will. Oh, my goodness. He hit it. Oh, my goodness. And they're going to check to see if he got it off in time. But this crowd is booing, not because the shot went in, but because he appeared to get away with the travel. Stumbling there, nothing called. And I don't think it was a travel. I don't think so either. He got it poked away, and I, I think he got it off. I do, too. And this has been quite a performance here by the boys in black here in the first half. That against the shot clock Let's see if we can take a look at the bottom definitely got a off. full second there on that shot clock mick Fieldbinder was the official who wanted to take a second look at that and he says yep indeed it was good got it off with one second to go yeah i don't think it was a travel i don't either because he still had a pivot foot but this is the kind of game where you look back and if you lose it, Western will say, man, I can't believe we lost to Southern Miss. But Southern Miss is playing so well right now. It seems like everything is working for them in the offensive end. And it is 39-31 with that three-pointer. And that was their sixth three-pointer made in the first half. Again, as you mentioned, they only make five per game, shooting 43% from downtown so far this evening. A little sarcastic cheer from the fans here <laughs> after a foul was called on Southern Miss. 22 seconds on the shot clock. There's about a 19-second differential. They're trying for a two-for-one. Savage off the front of the iron, and it's Southern Miss ball. <laughs> and now the officials will confer. And it will stay with Western Kentucky. <laughs> Mick Fieldbinder getting his money's worth out there. He ran over. I don't think he was going to get yeah, out of this yeah, building. <laughs> Keeping that call the way it was. These people were ready to riot at this point. And to me, that, that it almost looked like Williams knocked it out, though. Yeah, hard to tell. Yeah. So now they don't get the two for one, but do get the ball back. Two, three zone now. Get Justice. out of the shooter. Ooh, in and out, no good. And that's going to be a foul on Western Kentucky. Still no free throws, though. That's just a third team foul on the Hilltoppers. So 24.1 seconds to go in the first half. And Southern Miss, with the shot clock off, has a chance to take its largest lead into the halftime break. They've led by as many as nine. Just four turnovers today for Southern Miss. Just one for Western. Let's see if Southern Miss 
to get one more high percentage shot before we go into the locker room. Surprising first half here at Diddle Arena. Gabe Watson, entry pass, hook shot, got the roll. Oh. Why not? Boban Jokdomi gives Southern Miss a 10-point lead going into the halftime break. Well, it's certainly not time to panic if you're Western Kentucky. They didn't play badly, but Southern Miss was so good on offense, the question is, will they run out of gas or not? And so far, they have been terrific. Kristen Valboni is with Southern Miss head coach Jay Ladner. Coach, you are very successful offensively in the first half. You go into the locker room with a 10-point lead. How were you able to get it done here? Well, we were very fortunate when Davia Strain got off to a great start and uh, against their against their half-court trap and was able to get a couple looks. So I, I have to give a lot of credit to him. But I thought we played smart for the most part of the first half and were efficient offensively. And but hey, it's, it's 20 minutes. We got a short bench, so we got 20 more to go. You said it right there, 20 more to go. We know Coach Stansberry will make adjustments. We know this crowd could get back into it. So how do you bring the momentum when you come back out of the locker room? It's a great environment here. This is what basketball is supposed to be like. My, my, my hat goes off to the folks here and the way it's supposed to be done in Conference USA. But we, we just got to keep playing our game, being getting stops, uh, being smart on offense, make sure we're getting the basketball to the right people at the right time. All right, Coach, thank you so much for the time. Wow, so Western Kentucky, a double-digit favorite. About a 12-and-a-half point favorite goes into the halftime break down by double digits. 41-31, Southern Miss on top in an interesting matchup here a week away from the end of the scheduled games and the beginning of bonus play. I'm going to step aside for a moment, and the stadium crew is going to break down signing day from a Conference USA perspective. Welcome into the stadium studios. He's Michael Felder, our gridiron guru. I am Amina Smith. Time for us to take a look at Conference USA and their signing day recap. FAU and FIU have the numbers two and three recruiting classes in the conference. And Michael, when you take a look at these two classes side by side, what stands out to you? Well, one, they finished signing day one and two. Yes. But then a late surge from North Texas got them to that number one spot. But the thing that I saw out of this, both guys, Butch Davis and Willie Taggart, doing what they do best, and that's getting out to the recruiting trail. For Willie Taggart, it's those relationships with those high schools. He was already recruiting in the state of Florida and the state of Georgia mm -hmm. when he was at Florida State. He loses that job, gets the FAU job when Lane Kiffin takes off to Ole Miss. And so what do we get? We get, we get Willie Taggart mm -hmm. going to Georgia, going to Florida, and that's reflected heavily in his signing class for Butch Davis. Butch Davis is all about the state of Miami, right? right. From Tampa down is the state of Miami, mm -hmm. and he went and he pounded the, pounded the pavement hard to get kids from that area to make sure they stay at home and play in their own backyard. Let's start with a look at the Panthers. FIU brought in linebacker A.J. Mathis. What can Mathis bring on defense? Well, Sage Lewis is a heck of a linebacker for FAU. Or excuse me, for FIU. Got to mm -hmm. get them right. Uh, the Panthers, not the Owls. <laughs> so Sage Lewis makes plays for them. And I think A.J. Mathis could be another guy in that line of Sage, in, the, in the same vein as Sage Lewis. He is athletic sideline to sideline. Mm -hmm. He plays downhill, which is what you want out of a linebacker. He's also capable in coverage. Look, when you're playing in Conference USA, people want to throw the football around. You're going to have to play law of tech. You're going to have to play these teams that want to throw. And when you do that, you're going to have to have a linebacker that can cover so you don't have to take him off the field to put a safety on. And A.J. Mathis can stay on the field. Gay all he can stay on the field three downs all game. Get them off, get them off the field so that your offense gets the ball back so you can go score. They also pick up guard Jose Mirabel, an in-state prospect. What can he help or how can he help in the trenches? Well, I love this, right? He's athletic. 6'4, 285. He's got good size. You see him playing the tackler. You see him mauling the guy straight to the ground and then telling him all about himself, getting that pancake. I love <laughs> to see that. So this is an FIU team that only gave up 14 sacks this season. And that's right. bananas. That's a insane step and the best thing you can do as a football team from an offensive standpoint is give your quarterback time to make throws down the field and find your playmakers and I think Jose Mirabal has got the opportunity to help out in that respect you see him playing tackle he's listed as a guard at 6'4 285 I think he's athletic enough to play some tackle mm -hmm. the other part could be let's let's say we do kick him down inside to a guard he's going to gain a little bit more weight he's going to be a little bigger but the thing you want is athletic guy he can still pull out and help you in the run game in addition to continuing to boost up the, the protection for your quarterback and keep keep them at that. Listen, 14 sacks for a season, yeah. that's a heck of a number. That's that's basically a sack a game. Yeah. And 
that's a really good number. There are a lot of teams that give, have given up 14 sacks in back-to-back -back games. So mm -hmm. this is a big number for them. On the flip side, FAU signs Willie Taggart Jr. listed as an athlete, of course, the son of head coach Willie Taggart. Where do they play him on the field? I mean, we see him playing quarterback. Mm -hmm. Is he going to play quarterback? Is he going to play wide receiver? Does he kick over to defense? Can he kick over to defense? Right. Or is that a thing that he's not capable of doing? I think the big key for me is you see the athleticism, right? This is a guy you see him shake, bake, get out of, get himself out of trouble, then explode to go get into the end zone. He's got great explosion. He's got good understanding of the game. So I think that's a big plus. It's all about where they want to use him just figure it to figure out where he fits best for this football team. Maybe early on that means he plays some wide receiver mm -hmm. and then later on he switches back to the quarterback position or vice versa. I think this is going to be really interesting to see how Tagger uses his own son to go out and help get some dubs. Elsewhere in Conference USA, Charlotte has improved their recruiting rankings. Just last year they were 14th in recruiting and this cycle they're eighth. What was the difference maker this year? Well, let's start with the season they had. Yeah. I mean, goodness gracious, they go out, they get to a bowl game. Mm -hmm. That's huge for them. They also, look, they signed 22 kids instead of 16. Pe more kids are just taking notice yeah. that Charlotte is playing football, that Charlotte can play football. Both years, eight, eight, eight and eight commits. But the big thing that I noticed about them is border states. Mm. It's not just North Carolina kids, right? So you hold an eight commit, eight in-state commits, but you also your number also goes up. So what does that mean? That means you're going into Tennessee, you're going into Georgia, yep. you're going into South Carolina, and you're going into Virginia. All states that border North Carolina, and they just they are discovering that you have a program and they have potential, they have the potential to play big time college football at that program. And I think that's a big plus for this staff. Offensive tackle Arabi Muslim recently signed with Charlotte, listed as a three-star prospect. What's his upside on the field? I think the upside, two, there's two things. Mm -hmm. One, he comes from a program that is massive in yeah. North Carolina. Mallard Creek, Creek Boys, let's go. Creek Boys. Yes, he comes from that <laughs> program, right? So he's playing tackle. So we know that he's been coached very well. Mm -hmm. I know their strength and conditioning coach, Donald Littlejohn. Right. They are, he's lifting weights right now. He's, this is a kid that's <laughs> doing power cleans. He's doing cleans, he's doing jerks, he's doing all those things. And you see him playing tackle, right? So he, maybe he kicks down inside. We'll see what, what happens with him. All 6'3", 295 as a high school. Mm -hmm. That guy's gonna only get bigger. So I think the big thing for him is watching that footwork. He understands what a kick slide is. He understands that he's gotta make sure he keeps his shoulders square. He understands how to punch. So for me, they're getting a player that might have an immediate impact on this football team. Yeah, UAB also took a huge drop in the rankings in their recruiting cycle. In 2019, the Blazers had the third ranked recruiting class in the conference. And this this year, they're 13th. What caused the big drop off? Well, I think it was a rough season for them. It wasn't as you know epic as we saw them a season ago when they mm -hmm. got to the Conference USA Championship game. So this is all about retooling, and the big key for them is going to be they've got to up that in-state commits number. There were 12 last year. They get the five, only five this season. I think. It is a re direct reflection of not them not having the season that they wanted to have. Yeah. And so it's a little, things are a little tough. Things are a little rough. And it, it's, it's, it's reflected in recruiting for them to continue or for them to get back to the yeah. Conference USA Championship game. They have to go out and they're going to have to recruit harder. They're going to have to recruit better, specifically in that state of Alabama where there is a ton. Look, we put it on air, right? We show it on Friday Night Rivals. There's a ton of, of Elite talent in that state. Alabama and Auburn can't get them all. So those kids, get some of those kids. you got to get more of those kids yeah. so you can play and achieve at a higher level. Running back Willie Eldridge out of Texas is staying in state to play for UTEP. What's his strength on offense? Well, I think it's just the explosiveness. Yeah. And this that's the key, right? I think when we look at that, you need a guy that's going to be able to make some plays. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at this. Look, okay, 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 okay. Now I'm going to go. And I think having his ability to break tackles, elude guys, and then explode up the field is going to be big because this offense has been so stagnant so uh predictable and, and obviously easily stopped so you need a guy that can explode to make plays and i think that's going to be a real big get for them so this is one where you want to find a way to get him the rock they got to shore up that offensive line but the key is going to be get this kid the rock so that he can go make plays he plays at Cy ranch they play big time football. Get him the ball and he can help lead your football team to the promised land. Meanwhile, Western Kentucky picks up an athlete on the trail. Jacquez Evans out of Georgia. Why is Evans the right fit for the Hilltoppers? Well, listen, this I, here's the thing. You say right fit. I don't even know if he's the, I don't know what his fit is. OK, he is. <laughs> listen, it's the state of Georgia, right? He's the two way offensive player of the year in the state of Georgia. Mm -hmm. When I look at him, he's built like he's playing linebacker. Wow. So I, I this the, he's listed as an athlete. Right. And we're watching the running back highlights and he can really play. I love that out of him. Like this guy, he can be a force for Western Kentucky running the football. Mm -hmm. Put him back there, let him run. I think he could have an impact sort of like Spencer Brown had at UAB yeah. a couple seasons ago. But he also 
can be the heart and soul of your defense. Mm -hmm. I mean, this guy can move sideline to sideline. He can play down 6'2", 225. He fits with a modern linebacker. He can do all those things for your football team. And so the question is going to be, you got a running backs coach, you got a, you got a linebackers coach, you got an offensive coordinator, you got mm -hmm. a defensive coordinator. Where do you play him? Because yeah. both of those guys, all four of those guys are going to want him right. on their team. I want him on their side of the ball, on their practice field. Mm -hmm. This is a question of where do we play him because Evans is a stud, and he's going to be he's going to be an all-conference USA player. It's just a matter of if it comes at linebacker or at running back. Western Kentucky has nine players from the state of Georgia. How are they so successful recruiting in that state? Listen, get in there, right? Let yeah. people know you got an opportunity. I think that the, the big key for them is they're pushing Conference USA over mm -hmm. Sunbelt. And right. I think that's one of the things that, that Conference USA still does have. And I think they're still in a hierarchy. Everybody thinks Power 5 versus Group of 5, but at the end of the day, AAC is saying we're better than Mountain West or better than Conference USA. Yeah. Conference USA, listen, look at us. We play bigger time football than the Sunbelt. We've got teams that go make plays. And I think with Western Kentucky, the turnaround they had is also a big part of it, right? This yeah. is a team that found ways to go out and, and, and grab Ws and make a big plays, make big plays, have big impact. So I look at that, and I think that that's the way that they're recruiting in that state mm -hmm. well. And I think that's also the way that they are raising up this program. All right, before we wrap, I want to show you this video right here. Arabi Muslim, I know we talked about him earlier. <laughs> He's a two-sport athlete. Yes. However, it's not the sport that you might be thinking of. Take a look at this video right here. Usually, you know, players, they either play basketball or run track. He's doing some karate right here. Yo, he's got the gi on. I like he's it. He's got the gi pants on. He doesn't have the full gi on. You know, you got to get First that full gi. I love that you know it's called a gi. Like, yeah. my little brother did karate way back when, and I just that just took me back. That just, he's going just through, said that. Listen, it looks like he's going through a kata. I took taekwondo, made it up to a blue belt, purple belt. Oh, my gosh. He's going through. He's doing a kata right now. I, wonder, I would I wish there was audio so I could hear his ka. You want to hear the audio want, yeah. on it? I want to hear his ka. <laughs> I want to hear I the yeah. He does the bow. Yeah. The, oh, there we go. Look. Oh, he got the fancy gi on too. It this is, is pretty fancy. It is pretty fancy. Look at that. I mean, I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting either basketball sure. or track or something. Love it. For Michael Feld, I'm Amina Smith. We'll see you next time. The flat path is easy, but for the inspired, there is a spirit that kindles a desire to climb higher, to soar, to roll, to reach new heights. The wish to be a part of something more, to do more and to be more. Hilltoppers know that life at the top is worth the climb. Climb with us at Western Kentucky University. Mental health affects us all, whether you finish first or last. Whether you win or lose. The stigma around these issues causes those around us to suffer in silence. Mental health is nothing to be ashamed of. You are not alone. You are not alone. As a student athlete. As a teammate. As a friend. We pledge to continue the conversation. Because it matters. Because you matter. Stand up to the stigma. Stand up. Stand up. Continue the conversation. You are not alone. The excitement of Division I college basketball in the month of March is returning to Ford Center and the Star in Frisco, Texas. Get your tickets now for the 2020 Conference USA Men's and Women's Basketball Championships presented by Baylor Scott & White Sports Performance Center. 22 basketball games over four days in one location, March 11th through March 14th. For tickets, visit your Conference USA team box office or go to conferenceusa.com. You won't want to miss Hoops at the Star. One direction, straight to the top. Chosen one, racing the club. They can't keep up, but you can stop. One direction, straight to the No surprise that one team's up double digits here at halftime. The surprise is that it's Southern Miss leading Western Kentucky by 10, 41 to 31. They outscored Western Kentucky 7-0 on second chance points and Western Kentucky 2 for 14 from three-point range. That's Tim Scarborough. I'm Chris Hassel. Kristen Balboni will rejoin us in just a minute. This is stunning so far, what it, we're seeing. It really is stunning when you, you said it. it's kind of a topsy-turvy world we're living in right now because you have one team that was picked to win this conference and one that was picked to be at the bottom of the conference, and it's kind of played out that way for the most part. But tonight's game has not played out that way. Southern 
miss is here, and they are ready to steal one, and they are in a great position to do so. Well, Davius Drain scored the first 10 points of this game, and Southern Miss made its first six shots from the floor. Yeah, and Drain was really good getting those three point shots to go. But on the other end, Carson Williams was the guy who kind of kept Western in it early. He had a terrific first half going off the dribble with the pump fake. And when you don't stay down on it, he's going to get to the rim. He's a barrel body. He can get all the way to the rim with perfection. Gabe Watson, though, leads all scores with 14 points, including this desperation three at the end of the shot clock. Yeah, gets the shot clock in traffic. May have gotten away with a walk, but he was solid in the first half. He and LaDavis Dream carried the load. The question is, we have another 20 minutes. Who's going to get it done for Southern Miss? But more importantly for Western fans, who's going to get it done for them? Only one turnover for Western Kentucky. And there you see the, the note at the bottom on Drain. The official stats had him with 13 points. I swear I've seen him score 15 with my own eyes. So that's the that's the number that we have it with uh, in the truck as well. I believe they just gave him two extra points. Yep, because earlier in the first half, they gave Gabe Watson a bucket that they should have given Ladavius Drain. But they fixed it. Watson still with 12, Drain now with 15. And those are the two. Watson with the basketball, number zero, and Drain, number 11. You know, those guys' names came up in the locker room. And this is that 1-2-2 two, two pressure that they have been deploying in the absence of Bassey. And it works again for a turnover, but just the fifth turnover today for Southern Miss. And into this zone once again. And they've, they've been successful when they've gotten it to Williams in the paint. But again, two for 14 from deep. That wow. one in and out. It's been that kind of night for Tavion Hollingsworth, though. A lot of swirling, but no dice. Two of nine now from the field. And now Southern Miss will slow it down with a 10-point lead. 50, nearly 52% first half field goal percentage for Southern Miss in the first half. That'll that'll win you a lot of basketball games, especially if you can replicate it in the second. Savage picks up his first foul. Not much foul trouble at all to this point. Hollingsworth has two. And Stevenson has a couple for Southern Miss. Watson re-keys the offense, guarded by Hollingsworth. One four set, and now the screen out high. Stevenson rolls and dumps it for Harper Baker, who missed it. Stevenson keeps tipping it, and finally Hollingsworth comes out with it. Harper Baker should have gotten himself fouled. He had a layup. Oh, they're gonna count. Maybe that'll get Tavion Hollingsworth in these Western Kentucky Hilltoppers going. And the thing about the Hilltoppers is that they just keep coming at you. They're going to stay on the attack. A great job by Hollingsworth to protect the basketball in traffic and then shoot the floater, absorb the contact, and score. He's got a chance for a three-point play. Join us Wednesday, 7 Eastern, when Lafayette visits Army. You can catch that game on Stadium. Welcome to the game. More full-court pressure, and that's a turnover. Five second call. You don't wow. see that a lot. So a surprise full court press from Western Kentucky and Southern Miss just wasn't ready. And normally when there's no one on the ball inbounding, you can get it into someone even if you just throw it off of someone's back. But that time a five second call. And Savage hits the three. Western Kentucky continues to play with confidence regardless of the situation. And that's what makes them a championship caliber team in my opinion. They score six points in about three seconds. <laughs> How about that? That'll get you right back in the game, and they are right back in it. From down 10 to down four. Five on the shot clock. Watson over to Kanuchuk. Boy, oh boy, they needed that, didn't they? Man. Uh, again, to me, it's not like there's a lot of breakdowns defensively. Southern Miss is just hitting tough shots. 
But at the other end, Jared Savage off the inbound. Pretty, let it shine. Splashdown from downtown. Time out of the floor with 18.08 to play here in the ball game. And Southern Miss leads it 44 to 37. Jay Ladner electing to call a timeout after that made three to try to get his guys back on the same page again. Preston? As you guys have been talking about all game, uh, it's pretty much the starters, and that's about it. Although we have seen a couple of uh, bench points. I think they. Yeah, both teams have a bench point. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So it was we hit the over on you guys' imaginary <laughs> poll, right? I said it, it would half, have it. Yeah. Um, but both teams have have been struggling to get production from their bench, significant minutes from their bench over the last few games. So Tim, what I was wondering from you as a as a former player and a former coach, we know these guys are young. We know they're healthy. They, we know that they bounce back quicker than all of us. But how do you manage yourself if you're one of these starters who is playing an entire game every single time you step on the court? Yeah, these guys, some of them are averaging 38, 39 minutes. Drain played 45 minutes in an overtime game last week, so they have guys logging serious minutes. But we, they are young, but still, you're playing against other young people who are more rested than you. Mm -hmm. So it's all relative, right? But my point is, I think diet, and rest are two of the most important things because you're really getting a lot of reps but you got to reduce those reps in practice so they're not playing as hard in practice they're saving their energy for games so but you have to get your 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 exercise well i'm sorry not your exercise but your diet they're getting their exercise, yeah, getting their exercise. Well, what do you mean by diet so they need to eat the right foods they can't be going to wendy's every night eating fast food they need to make sure they're eating what the nutritionist has for them yeah. and make sure they're not eating late night snacks and pizzas and all those things, which you tend to do when you're burning five to 8,000 calories a day. Yeah, you know they're hungry yeah. after a game. But but that's very important. But getting your rest and getting off your feet and closing your mind. Of course, they have to study too. Let's, let's not forget that. They're still student athletes. But the more you can get off your feet and just rest your mind and your body, the more you're able to recover. Josh Anderson gets fouled. He's going to get a couple of free throws. And as I mentioned, we're going to have sure. wow. Western Kentucky again at UTEP Thursday, 9 Eastern. Stadium, welcome to the game. That one on Facebook as well. The thing that would concern me as a Hilltopper fan is what you need to do to make the tournament is going to have to be to, to win the Conference USA tournament. You've lost back-to-back -back championship games. Yeah. How do you expect to win at least three games in three days with uh, basically just six players? It can be done. It has been done. But, you know, before you even get to that point, you have to put yourself in a position to get a bye. And that's what they're trying to do now getting one of those top four spots. But you'd still have to win three games in three days. you got to win three in three days, but it's better than winning four in four <laughs> days. But really, again, it's about at some point you have to rely on some of those other guys on your bench. They're going to have to give you some minutes. I mean, Cozart, Gambrell, some of those guys have to step up. And Carson Williams. Great post play. Yeah, good position. And, and then, again, the fake clears him from one side of the court and he's able to reach to the other side and have basically an uncontested layup. Great pass by Rawls to get it into the post as well. And back into the game comes Bill Muse, who hasn't seen much action at all this season. Saw a few minutes in the first half. He's trying to give some of these Golden Eagles a rest. The lead is five. You know, I think back to 2014, Dayton got to the Elite Eight with six players dressing. They dressed seven, they played Good six. Point. So it can definitely happen. Sometimes it makes you a better team because you pretty much know you're going to be on the floor. You get that much locked in, you know who you are. Easier on the coach, don't have to think about <laughs> rotations. That's an air ball from Watson. Yep, Archie Miller got that team all the way to the Elite Eight and, and, and almost got to the Final Four. Savage will step back for three. No good. Again, how many times have we seen it go halfway down and pop out and then a foul 90 feet away? Tavion Hollingsworth has been the victim of that a few times, but that time Savage couldn't get it to go or Rawls couldn't get it to go. But I tell you what, there's a lot of basketball left to be played. If you're a Southern Miss fan, you can't really be too happy yet 
You know, you're not going to be happy until this one's over, to be honest, because we've seen Western make comeback after comeback. They were down versus Marshall Big, came back and won. They were down here in the first half by 15 versus FIU, came back and won by double digits. So they are more than capable of overcoming this five-point deficit. Fade away from Stevenson. That's a nice move. Woo. Hollingsworth used the head fake. Missed it. And here come the Golden Eagles. Hollingsworth now 3 of 11 from the field. Watson just pulls up and drains it. And that was right in Hollingsworth's eye, too, because pretty solid defense. They got back. They got matched up. But Watson, unabashed, pulls up. Splash. Anderson. Nice. Yes, and the foul. We know Josh Anderson is the energy guy for this group. Not a big three-point shooter, but he can slash right there using the ambidexterity around the bucket. Nice left hand in traffic. Converts. Chance for the traditional three-point play. Attempting his seventh free throw of the game already. Five for six. That one miss was almost an air ball. But he's made everything else. Still below 30% from downtown, but he's been making them of late. Now the 1-3-1 trap. Drain wide open. Wow. Harper Baker got his hand on it, but here comes Anderson. And Muse, number 22, into the game again. There's Anderson. Oh, man. Oh. Bringing Western Kentucky back, and here comes the crowd for the first time in this game. And Josh Anderson is the guy that electrifies this crowd most nights, and that right there was just a super athletic move. Get it to the rim. Watson wide open. Can't silence the crowd. And that one will go to Western Kentucky with 15-23 to play. Southern Miss is led for all but 77 seconds of this game, but Josh Anderson bringing the Hilltoppers within four. Watson had a chance to take a charge, but he also had a chance to get on the Instagram page of Anderson. He elected to bail out right there. Speaking of Instagram, Kristen has some photos for us. That's right. We, You and I, the three of us, had some fun earlier today. You know, we started to hear this crowd come alive. Diddle is such a cool place yeah. to watch a game. And, and one of the reasons I love it is because of all the little things that are around the arena that maybe you don't notice the first time that you're here, right? So I showed you guys one. And Chris, you hadn't seen it before, correct? No, I hadn't either until so today. Right Right outside, and, and right when you walk into the arena, there's this really cool little wall where you can see how you measure up against the common sizes of basketball players. So, now I've tried this out before, of course. I tried it out last season, as, as you would expect. Uh, but I had to get my uh, my guys here to try it out with me. Anyone want to take any guesses on where we went? <laughs> so clearly, I don't measure up to a center, which is um, heartbreaking news for me. I'm perfect I, for the uh, for the guard. It yeah. looks like Tim's perfect for the forward. Yeah, I'm close. I'm close for the center. Your hands aren't quite as big as the. Uh, yeah, whose hand sizes are those? Wow. That's not a typical hand size. <laughs> Your fingers yeah. don't even reach the end of the ball. Well, because here's the thing. Neither one of those are typical hand size, though. <laughs> Tim put his hand in there, and it wasn't close no. either. But we didn't want to embarrass him like that. I just say those are, <laughs> are those like Shaq hands? I don't know if Shaq's hands are that big. That looks like whose a cartoon. Hand? Because the other, Someone it's funny because that. the mural, yes, the mural seems pretty accurate for uh -huh. the, the other sizes. Right. And then they, and if you look on the ground, they have, I think, a size 17 shoe that you can put your foot in. But whose hands are those? We don't know. Uh, but absolutely love coming here and getting to see all of the little things. I mean, some of the things that make Diddle so great are obvious. As you can tell, this crowd that's always energetic. Big Red, who you know I love more than any other mascot. Uh, but some of them are just those little things that you walk around and you see, and it's part of what makes this venue so great. EA Diddle Arena opened up back in 1963. It was renovated back in 2002, named for the legendary coach, EA Diddle. Western Kentucky trailing by four. Almost Ooh. cut it to one. Another swirler. 
just doesn't go for Western. But they're right where they need to be. Within striking distance, nice push off there, nothing called. Harper Baker got it blocked. Here comes Hollingsworth. All the way. Offensive foul. Wave it off. Let's see. You be the judge. Tavion Hollingsworth takes off from way outside the rim. But it's Muse who's there Great play. for the charge. That is a that's a charge. And to me, I thought there was two different calls. I thought they were going to count that bucket for a second. But Kevin Mathis, the lead official, overruled Nick Meyer. Savage pokes it away. Here he comes with Williams trailing. Gets it blocked. Williams is there. Nice pump. And a hard foul as Williams earns two. Nobody sells a shot fake like Williams, but first the turnover off the trap. Savage gets to the rim, but look at the erasure. Going up high and strong, Harper Baker. But it's Williams there for the cleanup. Now the official sending both teams to their bench. I think they're going to take an extra look at this to make yeah. sure that there wasn't a flagrant one. I didn't see anything that would warrant that. But I we'll didn't find either. out. Hey, don't forget that Stadium is your home for Ring of Honor Wrestling. Check out the latest from the ROH superstars on all stadium platforms Wednesday and Sunday nights, 8 and 11 Eastern time. Stadium, welcome to the game. Now, there was a, a kind of a pump fake from Williams, and then the defender came right over his back, and he kind of ended up undercutting him a little bit. But I didn't see anything to warrant a, a flagrant. Nothing, nothing excessive in my opinion. First, let's take a look at the steal, clean snatch by Savage. Great block here. But then the pump fake and then the land. And to me, that's just a guy who, who fell for the pump fake and he had nowhere to come down on yeah. but Williams. So I think the officials are going to say that was just a clean basketball flat. That was Drain who went up over the top. Common foul is the call and the right call. I agree. So just two free throws here. But you have to look at it when there's a collision of that caliber. But again, as long as the guy is doing basketball activity, which he was, he was trying to block a shot, they're not going to hammer the guy with the flagrant. I think it's a good no call. Williams, six of eight from the floor. Gets the first free throw. Cameron Justice comes back in for Western Kentucky. Tavian Hollingsworth gets a rare breather for Rick Stansbury. Carson Williams at six foot five. How would you like to be the guy who has to play the position of the All-American that got hurt? That's got to be a lot of pressure on you. And six foot five, no one's asking him to be Charles Bassey, but he's pretty a pretty good. Carson Williams, he's been really good for them this entire season. Uh-oh, picked it up in no man's land. And, and we've seen that a lot, surprisingly. This, that play is not even designed to trap, but so many guys pick their dribble up there, you almost have to come out and trap them. Drain for three. Oh, that thing just shot off his hand. And you knew it was good the second he left his hand. 18 points now, four of seven from downtown. Drano. Again, he scored the first 10 points of this game for Southern Miss after a 3-for-13 shooting performance last time out. Savage answers. Jared Savage, when you need a big shot and you're Western Kentucky, put the ball in the hands of number two. 10-3 to three run for Western. Muse! Above this guy. Bill Muse out of nowhere. Some more bench points for Southern. Who would have thunk it? We didn't think we'd see him on no. the court at all. But we, we certainly didn't think Bill Muse would be the guy scoring off the bench. And he had that uh, great charge that he yep. drew a few minutes ago as well. William powers his way in. And Muse really hasn't even, he's been barely playing offense. The second it looks like someone's going to score, he's running back on defense. They get Savage for a reach in there. 13.04 to go. News left wide open. Harper Baker found him. Left open, had the confidence to let it fly. 
And he knocks it down. What a shot. Unlikely hero tonight. Southern Miss a 12-point dog in this game. If they lose, they'll fall into the bottom two in the standings. The bottom two do not make the conference tournament. Western Kentucky needs a win to stay a game behind North Texas for first place. One-handed rebound by Cameron Justice. Savage, another three. That would have tied it. Right now, the difference in the game is the Bill Muse three. <laughs> How about that? Never thought you'd say that tonight. <laughs> well, they might need more if they're going to want to hold off Western Kentucky in this place. Had a 10-point lead at the half. Muse. They're running pin down screens for Muse now. <laughs> well, they know he's hot. He's feeling it. <laughs> he lost that one. Justice for the tie. Southern Miss dodges another bullet. And that's a bailout call. Fans don't like it. That was right in front of the student section. Gabe Watson is going to get two free throws. What do you think, Tim? A lot of contact at the other end, I think, more. But right here, that's a that's a play on to me. I didn't think it was an offensive foul or, or a block or a charge. Not a lot of contact. Justice was certainly in position. But nonetheless, Watson will get rewarded with a couple of free ones. 80% free throw shooter misses the first next Saturday American visits Bucknell you can catch that game at 2 Eastern on Stadium welcome to the game one more for Watson who loves playing on the road he averages 15 points per game on the road. All four of his 20-point games have come away from home, but misses both free throws. He's well on his way to 20 tonight. He's got 14, but he couldn't cash those two in. So now, once again, Western with the chance to tie this game up with a three-pointer. Anderson drives, and he'll get free throws. Blocking foul on Jacques Domi, 11.48 to play. That'll take us to a timeout. Southern Miss hanging on by a thread. This would be the biggest win in the first season for Jay Ladner if they can hang on. Yeah, that's right, Chris. And, and you've been talking about it all game, just how important Southern Miss is to him. He's from Hattiesburg, was a player. You mentioned the NIT victory in 1987 before he graduated in 1988. We were able to find some pictures of his playing days, so I thought we would have some fun and take a look at these. And wow. Yeah, right? You know He's what rocking I noticed the first, short shorts. The, I, I noticed not only the, 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 the length of the shorts, but look at the thigh muscle. Yeah, right? I mean, he thigh was muscle showing good. off yeah. Do we think, thigh. is that a, a full mullet, or is that just the way the hair falls? That's what we think. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna go half mole. A half mole. Half mole. Half mole. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you on that. I think we got another one too. We'll take a look at this one. Oh wow! I like this now. This, this looks is like a, it's out of 1950. Doesn't it look like it's a <laughs> yeah, like it's a movie poster of uh, someone playing basketball? Yeah. That was him in his uh, playing days, though. I gotta, I gotta love it. Now you see those pictures and you get why he likes the striped tearaway pants from the 80s, Absolutely. right? It's, it's his vibe, which I absolutely love. Uh, but he's had a really unconventional path to get back to his alma mater, not at all like other coaches who are coaching at this level. And Chris, you were actually telling me about this. He started as a pharmaceutical sales rep <laughs> after college, and he was traveling around, and he just found himself going to high school basketball games and practices, you know, not necessarily the big events, the, the smaller events. He just couldn't really stay away. And that's how he knew that he had right. to get back in the game. And he said he always will consider himself a high school coach at heart, even though now, of course, he has moved up to the college ranks. And I just think that that shows how much you really love basketball if you just find yourself in a high school basketball practice. Yeah, watching right? a practice. I mean, he's not, he's not going, like, traveling around the country, going to, a, you know, a Big Ten basketball game or an ACC game. He's going to high school practices. That's how much he loved the game. If there's a ball bouncing in a gym, he was there. And, you know, he and... Rick Stansbury have been friends for a long time. Of course, Rick spent many years at Mississippi State, and Jay Ladner was a high school coach in the state of Mississippi. So those guys got to know each other 
And you can see during Tristan's halftime interview with Jay Ladner how much respect he had for not just Western Kentucky, but specifically what Rick Stansberry has done here at Western Kentucky. Well, and a lot like Doc Sadler did here at Southern Miss, Lad Ladner has a, a history of just building season after season at, at Southeastern Louisiana. Went from nine wins to 12 to 16 to 22. He's seven and 17 right now. But Southern Miss on the uptick, looking for their biggest win of the season. Harper Baker nearly threw it away there, but saved by Drain. And now it's just 12 on the shot clock. 1-3-1 one, one being deployed, and they're trapping out of it, harassing on the perimeter. Shot clock to five. Harper Baker tried to get it inside, and is it a shot clock violation? I think it is, yes. It is. It hit zero just as the whistle blew yep. to signal that it was out of bounds off Western Kentucky. So it is a shot clock violation, and Western can take its first lead since the opening moments of this game. By far their best defensive possession as well. There was no looks that time for Southern Miss. Golden Eagles led by 10 at halftime. Anderson. He's strong. And the 2-3 zone allows Bill Muse to stay on the floor. And he's played college basketball. Here he is again. Can't Off get it that time. Second chance. He's a grad transfer from Coastal Carolina. So he's and, and he wants to be a coach from what I'm told. And he's going to be a good one based on his knowledge of the game. They said that's why he's on the floor. Because he's a, a, a very smart, heady basketball player. Another shot clock wow. violation. Wow. Western, as we can see, is capable of, of taking their defense up a notch or two. They don't play that way the whole game, and you really can't expect any group to play that way the whole game. But key possessions, they sense the moment, and you can really see the intensity ramp up. Southern Miss is not comfortable right now at the offensive event. Justice, three. And the rebound to Drain. Not a rhythmic shot, though. Again, harassing. That one poked away. And now finally they can try to work some offense with 20 seconds left on the shot clock. A wild shot. Oh, gets it back. Missed it. Gets it back again. Dave Watson, stick to itiveness. That, that one was thrown to him, though. He was just recovering from being knocked out of bounds, and he found the basketball in his hands. Fourth shot opportunity here now for Southern Miss. Shot clock to three. Watson's got a hoist. One. Off the iron. Drain the rebound. Wow. He turned around. He might have had an easy bucket. Justice pokes it out of bounds. 17 on the shot clock. It's been frantic here at this end, but Western Kentucky just can't get the rebound. That's now nine offensive rebounds for Southern Miss. I believe they got three or four in that one possession. News comes out. Austin Leslie checking in for the first time. Stevenson out to Leslie. Baseline. Extra pass. Drain for three. Got it. Ooh. Cash money from downtown again by LaDavia's train. Five for eight from three. Now tied for third in program history for career three-point makes, 164. Williams is stuck <laughs> They're going right back to the 1-3-1. One, one. Everyone didn't get the memo, though, but now they're lined up, aligned properly to see if they can continue to disrupt this Southern Miss offense. Stevenson fouled on his way up. Justice and Williams converged. That was smart of Stevenson. He knew he was kind of tangled up, so he went straight up and, and pretty much knew the officials had to blow the whistle. Yep. So two free throws for Tyler Stevenson, sophomore from Columbus, Mississippi, 72% on the season. 
shooting right into the student section. And it's another miss for Southern Miss at the line. Next Saturday, stadium has St. Mary's hosting Pacific, 8 Eastern. Stadium, the only 24-7 network available on both television and digital devices without a cable subscription. And Stevenson gained 20 pounds of muscle over the summer. Wow. Missed them both. They're 0 for 4 this half, shooting right into that student section at the line. And he was used sparingly last year, but obviously they're counting on him. Second leading scorer on the team as a sophomore. Anderson ties it up. <laughs> Harper Baker nice. got a step. You just get the feeling that if Western Kentucky gets this lead, they might be able to run away. At least that's the feeling I get. But they just haven't been able to do it. And Anderson tied it for a great job of attacking. And Southern Miss gets the lead once again. Justice got his man in the air. Floater. Mm, beautiful. I know it's hard because they're good three-point shooters, but you have to stay down on the shot fakes. The second you get off your feet, you're leaving your defense vulnerable to dribble penetration. Continuing to really put the clamps on Southern Miss. Leslie left open, the lefty bricks it, and Western another chance to take the lead. And that's asking a lot for Leslie, who just checked into the game, hasn't played much, didn't play at all in the first half, to try to knock down a, a big shot like that. Baby raced a 10-point deficit. Trying to take the lead for the first time since the 16-minute mark of the first half. They are staying in this 2-3. That's not even close. Air ball from Justice. Six and a half to go. Jay Ladner has done a great job of keeping Southern Miss in this game and really playing with the lead for most of us. Harper Baker again. Beautiful. Two big buckets from Harper Baker. They've been able to attack the 2-3 and the man-to-man. -man. It's the 1-3-1 one, one that has given them trouble. Stansberry has mixed up his defenses, and that time it really didn't pay off. Anderson, good hand, poked out of bounds with 16 on the shot clock when we return. 6.05 to play. Southern Miss clinging to a two-point lead. Our Facebook fan of the game is someone who shouldn't be a fan. It's too bad because Charles Bassey should be on the court. But he's out here supporting his Western Kentucky Hilltoppers. Old school denim blue jean jacket. <laughs> and I think that's Muhammad Ali on the front as well, on the t-shirt. The greatest of all time. Well, and I had a chance to talk to him quite a lot last season. He was always, you know, the player that stood out. We were always doing the post-game interviews. I got to say, though, it's really impressive to me what Western Kentucky has been able to do without him. Um, you know, they went on that win streak. We saw it was five straight before they made right. that Florida trip, which I just thought was absolutely incredible. And we'll see what they can do here in the final minutes tonight. But we've got a poll for you guys. We want to know who will be Conference USA champion. And, Tim, what I wanted to know from you, speaking of, of Western Kentucky not having Charles Bassey and, and being thin, can they keep this going? Because you'd say they're incredibly talented. They play hard. We know they can win. But towards the end of the season, we know they're tired now. How can they keep this up as it gets closer to tournament it's, time? It's going to be hard, and these next few games are really pivotal because if they can finish as the top team in the bonus play, they'll get number two and three to come here where they have a better chance of winning. But if they don't, then they'll have to go to maybe one of those top teams, and that's awfully tough. But to me, North Texas is still the team to beat. They are really, really good. It's hard to bet against North Texas. Chris and Tim, I know you saw them in person 
uh, last week or a couple weeks Two ago. Weeks um, it's interesting now, Louisiana Tech and Marshall are in overtime. So if you think what happens if both Louisiana Tech and Western Kentucky lose tonight. Yeah, then North Texas has a two-game lead in conference. Western Kentucky at home under Rick Stansbury, winners of over 80% of their games. 16 on the shot clock. Coming up on six minutes in the game. Justice for the lead. Again. Wow, and that was a huge breakdown defensively. They were supposed to be in a 2-3. And the little used Leslie, who has the ball, wasn't in position at first. And that left Justice wide open. Normally, he can cash that in. But again, battling that back injury. 70% of you or so think that Western Kentucky is going to win the conference, but they'll have a tough time if they lose this one. Chuck uh, Domi. Of that 70%, though, how many of them are Western Kentucky fans? 100%. <laughs> right. <laughs> Possession arrow is going to give this back to Western Kentucky in what seems like at least a seventh or eighth opportunity here in the second half to take the lead. Yeah, the air ball and then the loose change. Everyone's scrambling for it. A good call there. Great hustle by both teams. It's been a very solidly played game for the most part. Western Kentucky just four for 24 from three-point range. And a lot of these are open shots. And Western has just three turnovers. They've been really good with the basketball, especially in conference, averaging just over 10 turnovers a game. Boy, they're missing badly, Tim. Badly. Yeah, that one wasn't even close by Jordan Rawls. And they haven't been necessarily bad shots, but they've been bad misses. Drain oh, off the mark. Too strong. Uh-oh, Savage hit the deck. And they're going to get a foul on they, uh, Southern Miss. I thought they might get a travel I thought at so first. Too. Yeah. That's certainly what... Southern Miss head coach Jay <laughs> Ladner thought. Yeah, it happened right in front of their bench. But, but they're in the bonus now. Boy, that's a costly, costly call. Take a look at this replay. And let's see if, yes, Drain, or, or Harper Baker, I should say, climbed the back of Jared Savage, which caused him to fall. So they had to blow the whistles, either a travel or a foul. And of course, since he made him fall, it has to be a foul. Savage a one and one. Oh. This is the front end. No one's done themselves favors from the free throw line tonight. Final results of that Facebook poll: 71 percent of you think that Western Kentucky is going to win Conference USA. They'll be two games out if they lose this one. Leslie skies high for the board. And wisely, Jay Ladner wants his team to use a little clock to get a better shot. Man to man now, tight man to man, deployed by Western. Shot clock again under five. Leonard Harper Baker driving and can't get it. Justice clears the board. Coming up on four minutes to go. Williams pushed all around. And they will get a foul on Southern Miss. And it'll be one and one for Carson Williams on the other side of this last media timeout. 63-61, Southern Miss has not trailed since the 16-minute mark of the first half. They led by as many as 10. But can they hang on? And you know, the moment of the game, Chris, was to me when Western was, has been mixing up their defenses. So right here, they've been running a 1-3-1 one, one trap, but they decided here to run a full-court face-up. And because of that, there was nobody within 40 feet to come back and get this inbounds pass. And now, all of a sudden, you get a five-second call. And I got to give credit to that man right there. That was a one-man press by Josh Anderson at a key moment of the game. And that kind of turned the momentum back in the favor of Western Kentucky. Yeah, that was, they were down 10, and Anderson got an and one, made the free throw, then deed up, forced the turnover, then Throw it in. Savage hit the three, yep. six points in about three seconds. Yep, and that was a really key possession of the game. And again, they have mixed up their defenses. We've seen the 1-2, one, 1-1 one, one diamond trap. We've seen the 
the 1 2 2, the 1 3 1 half court press. We've seen the, the point zone, we've seen the 2 3 zone. A lot of different defenses by Western Kentucky trying to do something to disrupt a very hot shooting Southern Miss team. And I think that's gotten them back into the game, quite honestly. Now Southern Miss made their first six shots of this game. Took a lead early, and they have not relinquished it. A couple of times, Western Kentucky has pulled even. Yeah. But they've had responses. Friday night, 8.30 Eastern, Oakland and Blackman from Tennessee. Watch great high school hoops all season long on stadium. Welcome to the game. That's Valentine's night, 8.30 Eastern time. Pretty good crowd here in Diddle as Southern Miss is starting to cool off. Remember, they shot 51 in the first half, just 31, 35% roughly in the second. And you know, they've had a couple of five second violations as well. Give credit to the intensity level that was picked up by Western on defense. And remember, there was a foul going into that timeout. Carson Williams has a one and one. It's the eighth team foul on Southern Miss. Love when the game is in the balance, though. I know the folks at Hilligan's Restaurant, they're all sitting there on pins and needles right now trying to cheer Western on the victory. Shout out to my man, Carter Johnson. They've only lost one game at home all season. Tim, you were here for that, so you'll get blamed if they lose again. <laughs> that was against Belmont. Yeah, they, that was a poor performance as, as Williams missed that second free throw. And now the 1-3-1. This is the thing that has bothered them the, the most. Now they get out of it and fall back into a 2-3. And, and now it's actually more of a, a point zone. So they are really mixing things up. And where's the offense going to come from? Not Kanutchuk, who misses that three. Might be a little bit cold. He's been on the bench for a while. Western Kentucky, another chance to take the lead. They stole a lot of minutes and got the rest Kanutchuk, though. So he's a the guy they're going to rely on down the stretch. Finally, Western Kentucky retakes the lead. Jared Savage puts the Hilltoppers on top for the first time since it was 13 to 12, with 16 minutes left in the first half. And a timeout, Western Kentucky. I think I said it earlier. There's nobody, if you're a Western fan, that you want the ball in their hands more than number two in a key situation. Late game, need a bucket, get a bucket. Jared Savage from downtown. And now if you're a Southern Miss fan, you just have to be wondering, and I asked the question last time down, where does the offense come from? Western has done such a great job defensively this half. Yep. Where do you go if you're the Golden Eagles? I'm running some kind of pin down for Ladavius Drain. But again, it depends on what the defense is. The man-to-man, -man, I think Southern Miss has gotten the shots they wanted. They've had trouble with that 1-3-1 one, one trap. It's, it's gotten them into late shot clocks and making them take tough contested shots in the late shot clocks. And some, they even got shot clock violations. So if I'm Western, I'm coming right back with some sort of trapping zone to disrupt on the perimeter. We'll see what they do. But if they play man-to-man, -man, I'm going with Ladarius Drain with some kind of pin down screen. He's five for nine from three. Savage, 13 points, 10 rebounds. He is the team leader in rebounds and blocks. He's really taking a step as a redshirt senior now. Take one of the leadership roles on this team. Everybody's had to step up in the absence of Charles Bassey in this six-man rotation, but Savage may be doing it better than anybody. And they do come back with the 1-3-1. One. Get it inside. Stevenson, good look. Got it to go, plus the foul. Now, Chris, you have to give credit to Jay Ladner because he knew that 1-3-1 one, one was coming, and that time they looked well prepared for it, and that's where you attack that thing. You go guard the guard, and then you get it into the middle to a guy who can do something with it. And take a look at this pass here. You got three defenders around the ball, no one near the basket. Josh Anderson tried to recover. A bit tardy on the rotation. Stevens converts. And now to try to retake the lead. Big free throw here, huh? Just three of eight from the line as a team. 72% on the season. 
And a make. Sophomore knocks it down. Now some bulk of pressure from a beleaguered Southern Miss. They don't, they don't have energy like this, do they? We'll find out. They again drop into their 2-3 zone. Hollingsworth faked the three. Rawls has struggled with the shot tonight. So has Tavion Hollingsworth. Rawls inside, left hand, tip no good, and Southern Miss has the ball and the lead, 2.40 to go. Yeah, but it's just a one-point lead if you're Western, no need to panic. If you're Southern Miss, you want to try to get another good, good shot, and now they force Western back into a man-to-man. -man. So we'll see what Jay Ladner wants to call a timeout. And now I bet you a lot of money that Rich Stansberry is not going to stay in that man-to-man. -man. Coming out of the locker. So you probably know that if you're Jay Ladner, right? Yep. So are you are you calling a play saying, okay, if they go zone, this is what we're doing. If they go man, this is what we're doing. Are you doing different things so that you're you, set up for you, everything? You almost have to, right? Because you have enough players with enough experience. You got guys in this game who have played 38 minutes, 34 minutes, Harper Baker, you know, Drain 38 minutes, Watson 38, and counting. They basically haven't left the floor. So they've seen how to attack that 1-3-1. One, they should be able to recognize they don't have a true point guard, and that hurts you a little bit in these kinds of scenarios. But if you're recognizing, that's why you call a timeout, so you can show them on the board what to look for to read it and then attack based on what you just drew up. Well, this would be something. Southern Miss, a team that might not even make the Conference USA tournament on the road at the preseason favorites who could win the Conference USA regular season title. I would have lost that money. They stayed in the man-to-man. -man. Shot clock to five. Drain. Got it poked away. Got it back. Tipped around, and Savage pulls it down. Big rebound there. But Southern Miss might get a second chance with Jared Savage to the rescue. Quiet game for Hollingsworth, just seven points. He's averaging 19 a game over his last nine. Williams, good position. And the bucket. He put him in the spin cycle, but I'm impressed with the catch. That pass was headed to the stand, somehow able to corral it and score. Does Southern have another answer? Under 100 seconds to go. Drain, tough three, oh. air ball. They ran the pin down for Drain. We all knew it was coming when they had that man-to-man. -man. They fought through those screens, and Drain forced to take a tough one. Marshall just beat Louisiana Tech in overtime. Wow. That means that for the time being, Western Kentucky alone in second place. If they can win this, yeah. they'll be alone in second, a game ahead of Louisiana Tech, and just one game behind North Texas. But they've beaten North Texas head-to-head, -head, so if they can finish with a tie, they will get that tiebreaker. Tie They're looking for Williams, cross-court, Savage. Now the entry pass, Williams, fouled from behind. <laughs> Stevenson tried to bail out and flop on a charge. Great job of the officials to not fall for it. And it's Williams who will go into the line for two. Watch Stevenson, number 14. He gets a little bump and he tries to bail out on a fall. But the referees weren't having it, and Harper Baker tagged with the person. Williams makes the first free throw. Josh Anderson checks back in for Western Kentucky. Would have been interesting had they called a flopping violation in that scenario, but they play on. Williams now a game-high 24 points. 9 of 11 from the floor, 6 of 7 from the line. Western Kentucky up 3 with a minute to go. Big possession here for Jay Landers group. Do they have enough in the tank? Great pass. And finish from Stevenson, one-point game. Great job drawing that up, Jay Ladner with a little clap for Harper Baker with a great delivery into the post. 20-second difference, shot clock and game clock. Now, Rick Stansbury does have two timeouts, not using one. They want to try to get that ball back inside to 22, Carson Williams. Shot clock at six. Justice got it!
was one for nine <laughs> from three-point range before he splashed that home. I was just about to say the confidence, the temerity to take that shot in that moment and knock it down as if he wasn't having a bad night. All is forgiven. Knocks it down. Big jump shot, big moment. There's justice in EA Ditto. And these fans who were quieted for the first 30 minutes of this game yeah. really showed up for the first time with about 10 minutes to go, and they've been with them the rest of the way in a packed house here at Diddle Arena. They're all standing right now, and with good reason. The good guys are up four. There's smiles everywhere. 24.9, a great time to be up four, but it's not over yet. You still have some work to do if you're Southern, if you're Western Kentucky, if you're Southern Miss, you want to try to get a quick two and then stop the clock with a foul or a timeout. Josh Anderson showing pressure. They are matching up. And then that will back off. Just trying to take some extra time off the clock. Down to 20 seconds. Great pass. Stevenson Woo! stuffs it. Two-point game. Some breakdown a little bit. Someone needs to prevent that pass from happening off a of rotation. Hollingsworth gets fouled. 13.3 seconds to go. It'll be two shots for Hollingsworth. And he's trying to split the difference there. But he picked the wrong area to go to when he left the middle open. Carson Williams with a breakdown defensively there. It cost him. And Southern Miss just wasn't ready, though, to, to set up its pressure after that stuff. So Hollingsworth, third best free throw shooter in Conference USA. Missed it. Wow. The door, my friend, is still open. And now they're going to make him think about the second one. He is 86% <laughs> for the season. Wow. He'll have one more on the other side of this timeout. And he's taken a ton of them. 120 coming into tonight. But that time got a little swirl. And that's been all night. For Tavion Hollingsworth. He's missed a ton of shots, and most of them have been close, and they've kind of spun out like that one did. Tough shooting night for number 11. He only has seven points. Rawls only has two points on one of 10 from the floor, but Josh Anderson has 16. And Carson Williams, a game high 24, trying to spoil the upset bid from Southern Miss. Four for 21 from your backcourt tonight. Wow. If you can survive that, you know you're a good team. This to put him up three. And they've made more free throws than their opponents have taken this season. Big one there. Let's see if they foul or let Southern Miss try to tie it. They do foul. And that's the right decision, in my opinion. Yeah, I thought Southern Miss would come down and hoist up a three right away because of that. And so Watson, just, a little a hesitation. Yeah, it's a judgment call. You don't want to hoist it up and then not get fouled. Now you took a very low percentage shot. And it's just one and one for Watson, who is a 80% free throw shooter. They've been shooting very well in conference play. Over 84%. But he's two for four tonight. Makes the first. Cuts it to two. 83%, I should say, in conference play as a group. Yeah, that's amazing. That is, collectively, to be that high. They were 69% in the non-conference. Yeah. 83% in conference play. He made that first one. Oh, that's interesting. A timeout called by Jay Ladner of Southern Miss. So that tells me. His player had the ball. That tells me he may think about missing this on purpose because it's not enough clock, potentially. So he okay. may want to miss this one, tip it out, and try to get a game-winning three. 7.3 left, and Western Kentucky's in the double bonus. And also, if you do miss the second one, you have to foul right away. And you can't be picky. You, have to, you just have to foul who's ever available to get that clock stopped. Both teams now out of timeouts. So this is it. Big Red hoping to celebrate another home victory. It would be a seventh straight win at Diddle. 
and keep Western Kentucky a game out of first. What a game, though. Southern Miss. You know, when we walked into the gym today, you could see how positive Jay Ladner was. And you normally, when a team is struggling, you think, man, these coaches are going to be angry and yelling at people. Great environment at their shoot around today, and it's really carried over into this game. This is one, you know, you don't want, you know, brownie points or, or close. You want to win the game, but they have to take a lot from this well-coached game, well-played game by Southern Miss. Let's see if they can try to get, pull off the miracle here with 7.3 left. One more for Watson. Makes them both. Now they set up the press. Justice gets it. He's fouled with 6.2. Cameron Justice is a 74% free throw shooter. These will be his first two attempts of the night. The reality is, though, Chris, even if he makes them both, they're going to have the shot to tie. If he makes one, they have a shot to win or tie. If you can get a shot off before the foul, because you know Western Kentucky, if they go up if three, them both, is yes. going to foul. I agree. And Coach... Stansbury may try to sub for Justice if he makes this second one just to stop the clock and get his defense set up. We'll see if they do that. I don't see anybody running through the scores table just yet. And now Hollingsworth comes out, so there's... He's already telling him to foul, by the way. No Hilltoppers down there in case there's a rebound, which there's not. Justice made a big three and now two big free throws. He should follow him right now. Follow him. Watson... Has a chance for the tie. <laughs> Missed it. And Western Kentucky comes from double digits down again. Fourth time this season they've come from double digits down to win it. That's a sign of a good basketball team. But Chris, on that last possession, Tavion Hollingsworth is trying to foul right here. He, he did foul him, but they didn't call it. And now, as a result, that miss ends the game. And Watson was wondering where the foul was, but to no avail. A very well-played game by the Golden Eagles, though. No question about it. They were up 10 at the half. Few people were giving them a chance to even be close in this game. 12 and a half point underdogs. Kristen Balboni is with the very relieved, I would guess, Rick Stansberry. <laughs> yeah, I would say so, Chris. All right, Coach, you were down 10 at the half, and then you battle it out here to get the three-point win. What changed in the second half for your team? Well, first off, give Southern Miss a lot of credit. They played really well tonight. I didn't think we had the edge tonight like we've had. Came out of that big game Thursday night, all the excitement of blackout, huge win. I didn't think we had that emotion. And when you don't play with that edge, anybody can beat you. But our guys at halftime found a way to come out and make one more play, and they did. We saw the edge there in that second half. Carson Williams, 24 points tonight on 9 of 11 shooting. He's really stepped up since Charles Bassey went out. I saw Charles go over there and give him a hug after the game. What can you say about his performance here tonight? Well, again, they, they zoned us tonight, too. We hadn't seen much zone. Zone slowed us down. It slowed Carson down a lot in the first half. Second half, we adjusted a little bit and tried to get it to him more on the inside and you know he's one of those guys he gets his hands on it he finds a way to get it in the hole we know this team is thin right now but despite all the injuries and the setbacks your squad has faced this season you just solidified your team a spot in that top pod in bonus play what does it mean that this team has been able to overcome so much and keep winning well you know those players deserve all the credit number one they found a way to stay together you know what we've been through we've been playing five guys a bunch Cars came on back now, gives us six. Um, we've been down and out in several games, but they've never quit. They found ways to put themselves in position to have a chance to win like they did tonight. All right, Coach, thank you so much for the time. Thank you, Kristen. 75-72, Western Kentucky comes from 10 down at the half to win by three. It took them a long time to get over the hump and finally take the lead. Cameron Justice was one for nine for three-point range. And it didn't matter, Chris. And then this, the play of the game. 
this, he strokes this thing with the confidence of a shooter. And they needed that bucket, and Cameron Justice off the bench knocks down the biggest shot of the night for Western Kentucky, which kind of sealed it for them. That was a moment they needed a bucket. They went to Justice, and Justice was served. And now uh, we have more clarity. Western Kentucky remains a game behind North Texas in the standings. They have clinched a spot in Group 1. They guarantee themselves a spot in Group 1. Southern Miss now falls out of the top 12. 13 and 14, Southern Miss and Middle Tennessee, if everything ended right now, would not go to the Conference USA Tournament. Right. How's that for the parity in this league when a team like Southern Miss could lead Western for the majority of the game and nearly beat them on their home floor? Well, I think Rick said it. Anybody can beat Western Kentucky in this league. But Western Kentucky can beat everybody, too. And mm -hmm. that's what we saw on display. Southern Miss, they're at the, near the bottom. Middle Tennessee, for that matter, they're still hard to beat in conference. Rice has won three in a row, too. And, and Rice is coming on now. And they're a very young team, but talented. So, you know, the, the, the team that surprises really is UTEP and UAB thought, and UTSA. I mm -hmm. thought all three of them would be competing in that top group. UTEP in particular picked to be third or, third or fourth preseason with all those transfers we'll get to see them next week but they are, have struggled four and eight on the year our player of the game Carson Williams 24 points to lead all scorers five rebounds and nine of 11 shooting because most of them were from about two feet out he just used his big body and great footwork to get good looks nine of 11 and it was an emergency for Southern Miss they had no answers for Carson Williams in the paint. And, you know, he put up Charles Bassey like numbers, quite honestly, when you look at what he did in the paint. And even against the zone, they were patient enough to throw it into the post and get it to him. And boy, did he deliver, cast it in nine times out of 11. A great game, six of seven from the free throw line as well. 37 minutes logged. Go get your rest, big fella. And Western Kentucky will head down to Texas. For the old two-step at UTEP Thursday, at UTSA Saturday, and then bonus play. For Southern Miss, they get to go home, host Florida Atlantic and FIU, and then bonus play begins for them. They'll be in the last group as well. All right, Western Kentucky. You know, it's kind of a sleepy start to this one for the team and the fans here at Diddle Arena, but the packed house showed up in the second half. He erased a 10-point deficit. It's the sixth time this season they've won a game after trailing by eight or more. The comeback kids at it again. And they win both games this week at home. For Tim Scarborough, Kristen Balboni, and our entire stadium crew, I'm Chris Hassel saying so long from Big Red Country.